Oh boy everyone, March is here. Welcome to the channel. And for today's video, I'll be comparing the Jordan 36 and of course, the Zoom GT Cut. So guys, if you haven't watched my other videos about these two sneakers, I'll be putting the link down in the description below the performance review of the GT Cut and of course, my performance review of the Jordan 36. So these two sneakers are kind of the one of the newest sneakers out from Nike, of course, the Zoom GT Cut. While of course, the Jordan 36 is the new signature sneaker from Jordan brand. So let's compare the upper first, guys. So the, on the Jordan 36, of course, the upper of the Jordan 36 features this very new upper called Jacquard Lino Weave. And the highlight of this upper is it is really thin and gives you excellent ventilation. Despite the very thin upper, the support that you'll be getting out of this Jacquard Lino Weave won't be sacrificed because it's very, very supportive and it moves laterally instead of when you're pushing your feet out on the material, on the weave, it doesn't stretch in that aspect, but this knit moves from side to side, if you get what I mean. So it kind of moves to the shape of your foot that is one thing that I really like about the upper of the Jordan 36 and comparing it with the upper of the Zoom GT Cut. The Zoom GT Cut features this net-like mesh or weave. It's really soft but it has an underlining fabric which is like foam or neoprene but while on the forefoot side, it has this very thin fabric that will give you comfort. So comparing it with the Jacquardino weave, of course, on the Zoom GT Cut, it's a lot thicker, especially on this top of the toe area which is like a neoprene material and for me i like the design of the gt cut the way that they designed the upper so the upper of the gt cut is a little bit thicker compared of course to the jordan 36 which i think this is the thinnest upper right now in any basketball sneaker while on the gt cut it doesn't have the same ventilation that you'll be getting out of the jordan 36 and i would say it's kind of pretty hot on the zoom gt cut so it's kind of hot on the Zoom GT Cut. So if you want more ventilation, of course, go with the Jordan 36. And as for the tongue part of these two sneakers, these two tongues are two of the best tongues implemented in a basketball sneaker. On the Zoom GT Cut, it has this near print like material. It is heat welded on certain parts of the tongue and it's very comfortable around your foot. While on the Jordan 36, it gives you the same comfort like the ones on the GT Cut. So I would say they're pretty much equal. And as for the lacing system of these two sneakers, the GT Cut has this traditional lacing system. While on the Jordan 36, it has this fast lacing system or speed lacing system that is kind of like in the Jordan 11, if you have that. The lace loops are actually inside, so it kind of goes inward like this. So for me, it's the perfect combination of the upper of the Jordan 36, which is really thin. Plus the speed or fast lacing system and it goes very well together. And as for the lacing system, the GT Cut, I don't have any problem. So I would say both lacing systems are very good. It gives you a very nice one-to-one -one fit from the forefoot to the ankle part of the sneaker. As for the durability of the upper, especially around the forefoot area, I would say the GT Cut has a little bit more edge there because it has more materials and on the side part of the GT Cut, you can see this plastic piece, it really goes up. So when you're doing lateral moves, it doesn't pull the material out in the footbed. And same goes to the Jordan 36, although it's not as pronounced compared to the Zoom GT Cut, it still goes up here. So you're kind of sitting here. I can put my finger in like that. So your foot is sitting right below this line. So you're very well caged, but of course, durability wise, the materials of the Zoom GT Cut, it's a little bit more durable because of how thin the materials are on the Jordan 36. Although my Jordan 36 has been stepped on a lot, it still is, I don't see any fraying of the fabric or even the glue stretching. So it still is holding on. And I think the build of the Jordan 36 is really well made given that the upper is very thin. It is glued very nicely to the footbed of the sneaker. Now let's move on to the back part or heel part of the sneaker, of course. 
The GD Cut is a low cut sneaker, while the Jordan 36 is a mid cut sneaker. So that's one big difference between the two. And another big difference around the heel part is of course, the internal cushion found in these two sneakers. The GT Cut has one of the best inner cushions for me in a basketball sneaker right now. It is thick, it is very plush, and it's very comfortable at the same time. Even though this is a low cut sneaker, it doesn't have any heel slippage. The fit on the heel, heel containment is awesome on the GT Cut. And even though the inner foams are really thick, it's still very comfortable. And that's what I think is the one lacking on the Jordan 36. Even though this is a mid-cut sneaker, I like the fit of the heel on the GT Cut a lot better. One main issue that I think on the Jordan 36 is they didn't put enough padding below this upper part of the heel. So this part has cushion, but when you go down here, given that the material is really thin, it doesn't have any cushion. So there's a lot of space here around this area. And sometimes I don't feel that my ankle or heel is cupped that nicely. So what I will adjust is really tighten the laces, especially after using other sneakers that I don't really crank up the laces that tightly. But with the Jordan 36, it's a must. So for all of you who will buy the Jordan 36, you really need to pull the laces I think this two part so that it really goes down and push your foot down to the footbed. That's the time you will feel a very good lockdown feel on the Jordan 36, which you don't need to do on a Zoom GT Cut because once you put your foot in on the GT Cut, it's like it's hugging, the sneaker is hugging your entire foot from the heel to the forefoot. So overall fit, I would say I would prefer the GT Cut because I really like the feeling of the sneaker really hugging my foot, even though the ventilation is not as awesome as the ones on the Jordan 36. Like the Jordan 36, when I'm running, I can really feel the wind going inside the sneaker and the ventilation is awesome on the Jordan 36. So it really depends. But as for heel containment lockdown, I would prefer the GT Cut more over the Jordan 36. And as for the insole of these two sneakers, actually the insole of the GT Cut is also part of the cushioning system. The insole of the GT Cut is of course a drop in React cushion. So let's remove it. This is a drop in React cushion, which is really, really awesome. While on the Jordan 36, it has this styrofoam-like insole, very similar found on the KD14s, the Kobe 6. And what's nice about the insole of the Jordan 36 is the more that you use it, the insole will form to the shape of your foot and mold it to your foot. Over time, it will be giving you a very nice fit to the sneaker and giving you a very nice lateral support inside so it cradles your foot more the more that you use it. And of course, on the GT Cut, this insole, ah, man, look at that sidewall on this insole. So it gives you also that lateral support that you need. Look at that, even on the forefoot part, it also goes up there. So this one is kind of thick and it has the shape here of the zoom unit, which also on the insole of the Jordan 36, although I can't pull it right now because I've already used this multiple times and there's a glue. So the more that you use it, the glue gets thicker on the footbed of the sneaker. So I don't want to ruin the insole of my Jordan 36, but it has this same shape so that the zoom air or the zoom struggle, the full and zoom struggle will sit really nicely below your foot. So that's the same on both sneakers. And as for the full and zoom straw build on both, they're the same size, but on the GT Cut, there's an extra zoom in it around the heel. While on the Jordan 36, it just has a one full and zoom straw build unit and both zoom straw builds are really nice. But the main difference on the feel of the cushion of these two sneakers is on the GT Cut, because it has an insole that is made out of React, 
you will really feel your foot first feeling the impact protection or the mushiness of the react cushion before you will feel the zoom which is really bouncy so impact protection first so it kind of subsides then the bounce is there then gives you a spring back while comparing it to the zoom struggle on the jordan 36 given that the insole is very thin it's, it's like a styrofoam like so you could immediately feel the bounciness on the zoom struggle of the jordan 36 so you wouldn't feel the impact protection that you'll be feeling out of the gt cut so it goes from when you're stepping on the zoom then the bounce back is immediate so that's the major difference between the Zoom Struggle on these two sneakers. So if you want that instant bounce back feel on the Zoom Struggle, the Jordan 36 will give you that. But if you want a little bit impact protection before that bounce back and the delay is not that big, you would like the cushion setup on the GT Cut. And one more thing that's different between the cushion setup on both the GT Cut rides lower to the ground, so if you want a lower to the ground feel, the GT Cut will give you that. Because aside from this React insole, then the Zoom Struggle, then the next layer is the outsole of the sneaker. So this is really, really low to the ground. So if you want a very low to the ground feel, the GT Cut will give you that. Because on the Jordan 36, below that full and Zoom Struggle is a phylon material, or I don't know, this is. I'm not too sure if this is Phylon or Krishlon, but it has an extra layer of foam and you're not riding too high off the ground, but it's a little bit higher compared to the GT Cuts. So it really depends on the cushion setup that you want. So if you want that immediate bouncy feel and you want to have a thicker foam below it, the Jordan 36 will give you that. But if you want a very low to the ground feel, plus there's impact protection, from the insole, then you would feel the bounce back. The GT Cut will give you that. I hope guys, you understood my comparison between the cushion unit of these two sneakers. So it's kind of hard to explain because you can really, really feel the difference once you wear them side by side. So those are my main takeaways on the cushion setup. If I am to choose between these two, I would honestly say I would go with the Zoom GT Cut more because I like how low to the ground it feels and the impact protection that you'll be getting out of this React insole and you will get that bounce back feel after that impact protection. I like the setup on the GT Cut and especially and what really makes me prefer the GT Cut more is the stability of the GT Cut given that it is really low to the ground plus it's more stable around the forefoot area which sometimes i find kind of distracting on the jordan 36 because of the extra forefoot zoom unit found on the jordan 36 here in the forefoot sorry i mentioned earlier that it just has a full and zoom struggle but it has an extra zoom unit in the forefoot giving the jordan 36 a very very bouncy feel so in terms of bounciness Jordan 36 is a little bit bouncier compared to the GT Cut. So if you want that maximum spring back, especially on the forefoot, the Jordan 36 will give you. But the main drawback about this forefoot zoom unit is I just wish that they made it flat because sometimes I would feel the bulge on this Jordan 36. And I actually felt that yesterday when I was playing and I was guarding my man, when I was cutting, then I stopped on my forefoot part and I almost rolled my ankle but there's one factor there because I didn't really tighten my laces on the Jordan 36 on the right side that much. So after that play, I immediately tightened the lacing system of my Jordan 36 to the max level. So I wouldn't feel that instability and my ankle will catch my foot if ever it happens again. So after that play, I didn't have any problems and maybe because I keep on changing sneakers, so sometimes I'm getting used to a different kind of sneaker, but if you are just using the Jordan 36 and you're playing with them always, so I guess you'll get used to with this bulge on the Jordan 36, but that's one thing or one factor that comparing these two sneakers that makes me like the GT Cut more over the Jordan 36. 
is the stability around the forefoot part. Now let's move on to the outsole of these two sneakers. The GT Cut has this tire like pattern, which is made out of this very, very thick rubber. You can see how thick the rubber is. Although the grooves are not too deep and some parts of the grooves are closely to each other, thus making the GT Cut absorb more dirt in between the traction. But don't get me wrong, guys, the traction on the GT Cut is, is, I mean, very, very nice. On a clean or dusty floor, it still goes very well. Even if there's dust present on the traction on the GT Cut, it still is very, very tacky. The GT Cut really has excellent traction. And comparing it to the traction of the 36, it has this lightning like pattern. And I like the spacing on the traction pattern on the Jordan 36 a little bit better compared to the GT Cut. Although it's not as thick as the ones on the GT Cut, but the grooves are deep. And my Jordan 36 is made out of XDR rubber. This is the PF version. So it's made out of extra durable rubber. So I'm not too sure if you have the non PF version, which doesn't have extra durable rubber, if it's as durable as mine. But this one, I've been playing with them and I cannot see any fraying on the rubber material of the traction of the Jordan 36. And as for grippiness, both, I would say it's as good as the ones on the GT Cut. It grips really hard, it squeaks hard, and even on a dusty floor, it still grips awesome. But the Jordan 36 doesn't catch that much dust because the pattern is widely spaced. So in terms of dust pickup, so if you don't want to wipe your sole that much, the Jordan 36 is a little bit better there compared to the Zoom GT Cut. As for outdoor use, I would say the GT Cut would last more outside because of how thick the materials are, even though it's shallower, but the rubber material is really thick. So I would say it, it will be a little bit better outdoors, but the Jordan 36, if you have the PF version, I think it will be okay for outdoor use. But because the Jordan 36 is really expensive, it's more expensive, then the GT Cut, this is 8,900 pesos, while this one is 9,600 pesos. So this is 170, I think. And this is 185, if I'm not mistaken, US dollars. So $15 difference from these two sneakers. So if you don't mind using your expensive sneakers outdoors, be my guest. I think this will be okay for outdoor use too. And now let's weigh in these two sneakers. The Jordan 36 weighs 410 grams at US 11 size, while my US 11 GT Cut is 480, so 70 grams heavier on the GT Cut. So the marketing on the Jordan 36 is really true. It's one of the lightest basketball sneakers that is out in the market, while the GT Cut, although it's heavier compared to the Jordan 36, when you're wearing the GT Cut, you won't feel it too heavy because of how nice the fit is on the GT Cut, so I really don't feel that weight at all on the GT Cut. I actually don't mind it. And actually for my size, for that weight for around 450 to 490, it's still okay as long as the sneaker has a very good fit. So that's it on my comparison between the Jordan 36 and the Zoom GT Cut. Let me know which sneaker you would choose. Hit me a comment down below. Thank you again guys for dropping by. Thank you for support. This has been Mark Chess once again. Please do subscribe and like this channel. It will really mean a lot. Thank you once again. I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.